So if you have Lightroom open, go ahead and click on Crop, and then press O on your keyboard. This is gonna bring up a number of different crop overlays to help you get more creative ideas and compositional control over your digital crops. Now, this is something that I learned a couple years ago, but everything we're talking about in today's video is something I've learned about Lightroom in the last year. And honestly, I can't believe I didn't know this stuff because these are extremely powerful tools that if I didn't know after 10 years of editing, some of you might not know either, and I wanna spread the wealth with y'all. So let's get into it, and big thank you to PPA, also known as Professional Photographers of America, for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. So this first tip is something that I actually learned a few weeks ago in LA at Adobe Max. Now, this is a mask within a mask. Now, the second thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is another way to utilize masking and take things away from it, but this is so much more powerful and it's gonna save you a ton of time. It's already saved me a lot of time. Now, let's say with this car example photo, we want to add a linear gradient to darken up this car. Now, traditionally, if we wanted to do that, we would have to add a linear gradient into this scene. We would drop our exposure, and obviously it looks terrible because it's negatively impacting our sky, our tire, our wheel, and our ground. Now, you could go in and brush out all this, which is something, like I said, we'll talk about a little bit later, but in this specific example, if you have an object that you want to add some type of filter, linear, or radial to, there's a much better way. So what we're gonna do is delete this mask and now we're gonna click object and we're gonna select this car right here. Now once we highlight the car we can go back up to our mask and we can select these three dots and we can go to intersect mask with and in this case linear gradient. This is going to allow us to draw a linear gradient inside of this object mask that we already created. So now our linear gradient is only impacting the object that we selected. So we can drop this exposure and notice how it's only impacting the car, not the tires, not the wheel, not the sky. This Google phone is another good example and it showcases this a little bit better just cause you can see the mask overlay. So once again, let's click on object right here. Let's go ahead and select this phone. And let's say we want to increase the look of this gradient that is already happening. We have a lighter side to the phone up here and a darker side down here. So what we can do is we can go ahead and once again, click intersect mask with, we can grab a linear gradient, draw that gradient in and notice how only the phone that we selected is being impacted by this gradient mask. So now we can drop this exposure and create this gradient look and make it more intense, essentially in two quick steps. So one more example of this, let's jump to this cabin photo right here, and let's say we want to add more contrast to this cabin. We wanna increase this shadow on the left side. What we can do is once again, go up to object, we can select this little cabin or barn thing, whatever you wanna call it, and then we can click our three dots, we can intersect mask with, and in this case, we'll go with a radial gradient. So we'll draw this in, and notice how this radial gradient is only impacting the area of the photo, selected by that object mask. So if we brought our exposure up, we can mimic a light coming in from that side, or we can drop it down to emulate light not being there. And in this case, I think that looks a little bit better. It just adds more shadow and contrast to this scene. So this intersect mask width is a very powerful way to add light into your scene. So if you have an item that you want to manipulate the light on specifically, this is what you would want to use. Now, the second tip I have for you is if you're in a situation where you want to make a larger adjustment to your scene but you want to take something away from it you're going to want to use this so let's jump to this image of my sunglasses now let's say we want to add a linear gradient into the top of our frame and we want to darken up this side of the image now obviously that's going to negatively impact these sunglasses which is the highlight of our photo it's what we want to showcase so what we can do is click on mask right here and then we can go to this subtract and then we can and select object here, we can draw over these sunglasses, which is going to remove the sunglasses from this linear gradient. So now when we drop this exposure, notice how the sunglasses stay intact. Now one more quick example of add and subtract is this photo of this sunrise scene. Now there's so many different ways you could manipulate this photo because it's so simple. So for the sake of example, I'm gonna show you how you would use add and subtract. So let's say hypothetically, we wanna add a radial gradient into the center of our frame to make this sunrise seem look a little bit more intense and maybe we want to warm it up also now when we do that notice how our silhouette is now not as silhouette as it was before 
silhouette. It's the vocab word of the day. So what we can do is we can click on subtract. We can grab this object right here and we can go ahead and brush over where our silhouette was and the top of our car as well. And we can make sure that that is not impacted by this particular mask. Now, one more way you can use add and subtract is when you have a tricky situation where maybe your mask isn't picking up everything that you want. So let's say, for example, we draw in an object mask down here on this window and we want to boost up the experience exposure and let's say for some reason we want to add this a little bit further out into the car door just to create kind of a subtle look like it's not fake what we can do is click on add right here we can go to brush and we can create a brush that's the appropriate size and we can go ahead and brush down here and add in a piece of that car now you might be a little bit confused about when to use intersect mask with and when to use add and subtract my advice is when you have a specific item in your scene that you want to manipulate. So when you use the object select first, intersecting that mask with whatever adjustment you want to make is going to give you a good result. Now, if you're in a situation where you're making a large adjustment, like we did in these examples, our background was adding some type of gradient to darken it up, that's when something like subtract comes into play. So larger adjustments, usually add and subtract works better. Very micro adjustments to specific items of your scene is when intersect mask with works the best. Now, before we continue on with two more powerful tips, I want to thank today's sponsor, PPA, also known as Professional Photographers of America. So PPA has a lot of cool stuff happening right now. One is Imaging USA, which is in Nashville from January 11th to the 13th. Anyone who signs up to become a PPA member through this channel gets free access to Imaging USA, so you can learn from experts about photography, photography business, and you can say what up to me because I will be there. We can chop it up. You can ask me any questions you want, and you get all the benefits of of PPA as a member as well. You get up to $15,000 of gear insurance and gear replacement options with a flat $350 deductible. So that link in the description down below is a no brainer if you wanna to come to Imaging USA and protect your camera gear. Now PPA has also redone their website which looks incredible and announced PhotoVision. PhotoVision gives you unlimited access to PPA's library of online education with thousands of videos, tutorials, and inspiring stories designed to help you elevate your craft and grow your business. These videos are expert led with industry leaders going over things like photography business, tutorials on lighting and posing, sales, customer service, branding, everything you can need to take your photography business to the next level. Right now, PhotoVision is not something I can offer a deal to y'all on. You can get started at $4.99 a month or you can sign up for the entire year at $49.99. That is linked in the description down below. If you're a current PPA member, I definitely recommend checking this out because it is a vast library of information designed to help y'all excel. So it doesn't matter if you're a seasoned professional or someone just starting out, Professional Photographers of America is where you need to be to learn about photography as well as protect your equipment. So remember, the first link in the description will save you $25 on a PPA membership, and the second link in the description is so you can check out PhotoVision and get access to the vast library of information PPA has for you. So big shout out to Professional Photographers of America for sponsoring today's video. So the next thing I wanna show you is something called color range. Now, in the past I've talked about a mistake a lot of people make in editing, which is called color gaps, where they make adjustments to colors and don't realize that adjustments to colors are impacting other parts of their image. Now, with this photo, let's say we want to create more of a punch in our flowers. They look a little bit dark in this photo, so what we could do is bring our luminance up, we could bring our saturation up, and we could manipulate the colors. Now, when we do that, it's subtle, but you'll notice that my skin tones are beginning to change. Now, one way you can work around this, especially in tricky color situations is by going up to mask and clicking on color range. This is going to allow you to fine tune your mask and also manipulate ranges of colors versus individual color channels like in the HSL sliders. So let's go ahead and click on range and let's draw a box around these flowers. Now let's see what it selects. Now you'll notice how it has selected all of the flowers but it's also selected these bricks as well as me. So we can go ahead and refine this mask by sliding this refined slider down. Now, you'll notice that the mask is still impacting parts of me, which is to be expected because we already identified that there's some red happening in my skin tones. So what I like to do here is I like to bring my exposure up to see where the mask is impacting parts of the photo that we don't want. 
Now from here, all we can do is click on subtract and we can brush away the parts of our photo that we don't want to be impacted by this color range. So we can brush down here, we can get rid of these bricks, we can brush away parts of me that are being impacted by the mask, and we can do the same thing with my legs to try and keep them natural. So now we have a color range mask that's impacting the entire range of color happening in the top of our photo and on our flowers, and we can go in and manipulate them with much more precision because we have control of all of our sliders. So we could bring our exposure up slightly, we could bring our highlights up, our shadows up if we want, we could bring the contrast down on them if we want, versus the HSL slider that only allowed us to manipulate the luminance, saturation, and the hue of the particular color. So we could even change the actual hue with the hue slider up here if we wanted. We could change the saturation as well. This is just going to give you a little bit more control over specific colored areas of your photo, and more specifically, give you the control to take parts away or add parts using that add and subtract tool that we already talked about. Now this final tip is such a time saver. I cannot believe I just learned about this a couple months ago, but it's a luminous to range filter to add a glow effect to your photos. Now, if you've caught other editing tutorials from me, you know that typically I drop my clarity in my photos just because digital photos a lot of the time seem a little bit too sharp. And when I have night images like this one, I especially like to bring the clarity down to give me that nice glow and halation effect. Now, if I were to intensify this effect, I typically would have to bring the photo into Photoshop. I'd have to right click, edit in Photoshop, create two layers, use a Gaussian blur, change the blur, and then mask out areas of the photo that I didn't want to be included in this glow effect. Now in Lightroom, I can just do it with one mask. So all you got to do is go up to mask, click on new mask, and click luminance range. Now from here, you want to select the area that will be glowing essentially. So it's this light for us. Now you can also adjust this range by moving this range slider around. Now once again, I find it easier to bring the exposure up just to see where your mask is taking place when you're making these mask adjustments. Once you find the perfect spot, you can bring your exposure back down. So now everything that is red is going to be affected by this mask. So now what we can do is drop down to our texture and our clarity. I typically just use my clarity on this and we can bring our clarity down and it's going to impact the areas of the photo that we want impacted without impacting our entire scene. So to close out the video, I wanna go through an example of a photo that utilizes all of these tips together. So what we're gonna do with this image is first, we wanna add in some type of radial gradient to just make this cloud of smoke or steam pop a little bit more. So we're gonna add in some exposure here. Now, obviously when we bring this exposure up, it negatively impacts our photo because we now have our two subjects being lit up. So we can click subtract right here, we can grab object, and we can go ahead and remove these two subjects to make sure they stay a nice silhouette. So let's get rid of both of them with that subtract tool. Now, from here, let's say we want this umbrella to have a little bit more pop to it, and we wanna create a gradient. So we can go ahead and select object right here, and specifically just grab the top of this umbrella to stand out a little bit more. Now, what we can do is intersect this mask with a linear gradient, and we can draw that gradient in right here and darken up that piece of the umbrella, but keep this natural gradient that we had in the original photo. But it's it's just a little bit more silhouetted, but we kept that nice light side to the image. So the next thing we can do is jump into a luminance range mask right here, and we can select this highlight. Now this is going to allow us to add that nice glow effect to the highlight areas of our image. So I think this looks good. What I'm gonna do is bring the exposure up just to see what it's impacting. I think it's impacting all the areas that I want. So I'm gonna bring this clarity way down here, bring the texture down just slightly too. Let's see the before and after. Loving that glow effect. Now I'm gonna bring the whites up just a little bit on that to make it more intense. Now the last thing we could do here, I don't think we have to, but for the sake of example we will, is go to our color range and let's select this red color range down here. I think the reds are just a little bit hot in this photo. Let's see what areas of red are impacted by bringing our exposure up. 
it's all the areas we want and what we can do is we can bring this temperature down just a little bit so everything that is hot in this image is cooled off just a little bit and if we needed to we could click on subtract right here and maybe we could brush out certain areas if we wanted but that is an example of all of this stuff working together to create an edit that I wish I knew how to do a couple years ago I can't believe I just learned about all this in the last year so I hope this video helped you out if it did hit the thumbs up subscribe if you are not yet drop a comment if if you have a tip that I should know about in Lightroom and big thank you to Professional Photographers of America for sponsoring today's video. I'll catch y'all in the next one.